All right, Rob, if you'd like to go ahead and share your slides, people will start uh, filing into the room starting now. So let's go to the next slide here. Airterra and Migo Branch Consortium is planning to make use of uh, residual wood as a feedstock to manufacture high quality biochar products. The Migo Ranch project is located at a previous Hutterite colony just north of Calgary and west of Crossfield. MGO Systems purchased this property in 2001 to showcase its magnesium oxide foam board fire resistant building products for both urban and rural buildings. MIGO represents an opportunity to demonstrate at a scale at scale how commercial sized on farm biochar production facilities can help Alberta regenerate agricultural soil, reclaim industrial sites and reduce its emissions. Here's how. The feedstock for our high quality biochar will be derived from forest industry residual wood, diversion of municipal construction and demolition wood from landfills, utilization of urban arborist tree trimmings and cuttings, wood fiber grown on Copus Willow plantations and agricultural land near Calgary. Airterra will then make use of its biochar as an animal bedding ingredient and feed ingredient to promote animal health and to deodorize barns. Spent, spent animal bedding will then be co-composted with its amended biochar. Our biochar will also be co-composted with municipal source separated organics and biosolids. These composted products will be used to regenerate depleted agricultural lands, reclaim industrial sites and establish additional copus willow plantations for additional feedstock to sustain ongoing biochar production in a circular bioeconomy. Biochar from the, M the Migo Ranch project will also be used to manufacture a high carbon content ingredient for the built environment products, such as packaging, building materials, asphalt, and cement. The project will generate a high quality, eco-friendly jobs in a new set of nature-based solutions to help Canada meet its emissions reduction and carbon removal targets. Importantly, the project will make use of its rich synthetic gas byproduct as a renewable natural gas that can be transported in Alberta's vast natural gas gathering system or converted into renewable electricity. There are three major revenue streams, the sale of biochar products and biochar infused soil mediums, sales of renewable natural gas or electricity and sales of carbon credits. Increased, the benefits are the increased crop productivity on farm, improved animal health, improved agricultural and municipal composts, increased feedstock of woody fiber for, for a circular bioeconomy, and improved building products that are stronger, lighter, and carbon sequestering. The Migo Ranch project will demonstrate at a commercial scale, the economics associated with on-farm biochar production. With success in, in, at Migo Ranch, there's a potential for dozens of similar facilities throughout Alberta. We invite you to be an investor and a key player on our team. Thank you. So shall I leave this up or how, how do we proceed from here? Yeah, thank you very much. I will now invite Jason, if you're still here to make a comment or ask any questions, Jason, okay. we are live. Okay, I'm moving over so I can look at the screen I'm talking to. Rob, great to see you. Again, I uh, fascinated by what looks like it could be a, um, a working example of a circular economy. Um, and so interested in the coppice willow. So um, how, how is that going to be propagated and um, harvested? How, how, how does that part of your solution work? It's something that the city of Calgary has already demonstrated at the Coroma field. It's about 1100 acres of Copus Willow plantation that's grown as a woody feedstock for uh, wood chips for the Calgary, city of Calgary composting facility as a bulking agent. And it was set up by Silvis Environmental and they've developed the systems for both the planting of willow and the harvesting of willow. On this, uh, they have uh, harvesters that harvest willow for the composting facility, and they have harvesters that ha harvest willow billets that are used to propagate the willow plantation. 
Billets are eight inch long pieces of uh, wood that get, uh, that get uh, plunked into the soil and they grow. It just propagate based on stem propagation. Sure, which is similar to what I've done at the Red Deer River Ranch by putting, you know, um, willow, I'm trying to, I didn't call them billets, but anyways, they, they're basically planted into the soil from those cuttings, the little cuttings. So, and then the harvesting. So there's specialized equipment, looks like a forward harvester or what is it? It goes, it goes down the field, harvests and chips at the same time into a, into a bin, just like a combine. Okay. So I've got it. I'll be, I'll be coming down there because I know exactly where that place is. Um, West of car stairs. Um, so, and then how do you measure the um, increased soil health and the increased soil carbon? How do you ensure that? I mean, there's, it's, I mean, I think it's intuitive, but how do you measure and verify that? We have to send the soil to the lab and uh, actually having operated a field that with increasing uh, biochar amendments over time. But the real point is the real, the real nut here is how do you get the biochar into the soil? Yep. How do you get into the soil? And uh, that uh, is it the unique proposition that we're, we're suggesting is that we use biochar as an animal bedding ingredient in confined animal feeding operations. So the biochar is in what ends up being that mass of manure, urine, and bedding. But how do you get that into the soil? The same way that uh, manure, composted manure, gets into the soil right now. By spreading. By spreading. By whatever whatever method that you use to bring your your manure to the soil. It, the whole point is getting the using stacked functions, getting the biochar into the bedding well ahead of the composting process and then it just goes through the composting process on farm and onto the soil the way it would normally go okay and then therefore the assumption before you've measured it is increased soil health because you're increasing soil organic carbon th th through that stacked approach rather than um rather than carbon um cycling through photosynthesis and root oh, no. exudates and no no listen the biochar, once it's in the soil, is going to stimulate the microbiology and the mycorrhizal fungi and the rhizal bacteria to, to become present much more. It's much more uh, uh, habitat friendly for those those microbes. Then the plants sensing the existing of a the existence of a healthy microbial population in the rhizosphere says, "Oh, I, well, I can invest some of my photosynthesis into exudates." And therefore, your microbial biomass increases, then you get your your carbon necromass from those microbes dying, and you're therefore sequestering more carbon in the soil itself. We need the soil matrix that invites exudates, invites microbes to be in the plant rhizobium, rhizosphere. And then, but then, so then for the farmer, being able to measure that, so there's, a, there's almost that intuitive... Um, assumption that by increasing that you increase your soil quality and your productivity, but then being able to measure what's in the soil as you're increasing soil carbon should then allow the landowner, farmer or landowner, then to access carbon credits when that market either voluntary or regulatory organizes itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have a question here from the Q&A, Jason, if you don't mind me going ahead and asking. Um, I have what is the ask? How much money are you looking to raise? At what valuation and through which proposed instrument? I understand that the use of funds is to finance the Meagle Ranch project. And so assuming that the Meagle Ranch project is the proposed use of funds, what is the schedule and total project investment required? Total project investment for a, a full scale, two scale, commercial scale biochar production plant located at the Meagle Ranch is around 20 million. But we're asking 25 in order to provide operational capital as well. Excellent. And be able to demonstrate use on, on a subsidized basis in order to get farmers uh, over the hurdle of uh, validating the use of biochar on the, in their bedding. Thank you for answering that. And now I'm going to allow Jamie Hunter to come onto the stage if you'd like to ask any questions. Hey Rob, <clears throat> how are you today? Um, 
So just a question on the willow. So why do you use willow versus something like industrial hemp? And uh, when you're turning these products into a biochar, is it bioaccumulating any potential contaminants that might be drawn from the soil, uh, metals, pesticides, anything like that? Well, I, and what's the life cycle of a willow, you know, from planting to harvest? Life cycle of the willows, it, it, you plant uh, the propagules or the, prop, the, the, the plant the, as we were speaking. It grows, it takes three years to get to full, full size. So every three years it's harvested and cut down to about six inches again. And three years later, you've got uh, 20 foot uh, willow uh, branches to harvest again. Uh, as far as the contaminants go, the biochar is an excellent way to uh, lock up contaminants. Uh, in a healthy microbiological uh, soil, the bacteria and the fungi go after the nutrients that the plant needs, and it leaves the whatever contaminants might be in the soil behind in the in the char pieces. Charcoal has an interesting uh, characteristic that it has charged surfaces, and so all these uh, uh, ionized um, elements will adhere to the surfaces of the char and the, the roots and the microbiology have the, have the choice to make which, which ions the plant needs. They bring the ions that the plant needs on the basis of the exudates that get fed to the, bio, to the, to the microbiology. So it's a whole living system, it's a living soil system that just decides how to use those nutrients. So note, unfortunately, I have to cut us off and move us back to the stage for the keynote speech. So I, there are a couple of questions in the Q&A, Rob, that you can answer um, at your leisure. And uh, see you all on the stage. Thank you again.